tomorrow at around 22 hours central african time or standard african time united is going to be hosting omonia at a stadium which goes by the names of old trafford and obviously they are really going to be there playing their fourth game in this group of the uefa europa league remember we really went ahead to beat them away at, by three goals to two obviously it was not an easy one but obviously we came up and we <coughs> sorry about that <coughs> And really won that game of football and obviously as we speak right about now it's Manchester United hosting Omonia today sorry tomorrow at Old Trafford and today in the next two hours obviously Eric Ten Hag is going to be here to tell us about what we call the press conference the injury updates and of course the early team news is already in and obviously we can see lots of changes coming in through the starting 11 of Manchester United that we went ahead to play a team which goes by the names of Everton that we won 2-1 over the weekend. Welcome to United Matters channel. Smash the like button, comment and share. And here I come with the match preview of Manchester United versus Omonia. UEFA Europa League. United needs to go ahead and really lead this group, but they need to go ahead and really beat Omonia, beat Shelf and beat a team which goes by the names of Rio Sociedad by a difference of two goals. That's when United will go ahead and really top the group in there. So, today is really a very good day. We really looking at how this game is going to go after winning that game of football it really looks nice after losing to man city by six goals to three going out to monia winning three goals to two coming and going away at everton goodson park and winning by two goals to one is really something great with ronaldo scoring his 700th club career goal obviously that shows you how important that game really meant for a man who goes by the names of ronaldo but omonia are really traveling to manchester united and by today they are going to be arriving at carrington sorry at old trafford all in manchester they train at old trafford and then tomorrow they get prepared for the game of football of manchester united versus omonia now omonia has a very big injury blow as far as this game of football is concerned fabiano their goalkeeper who really looked great and he really made a lot of good textbook saves while they're playing against manchester united in cyprus really got an injury when they are playing on monday they played on monday their league of cyprus and really got an injury and we don't know whether he's really going to travel with the team to manchester to see to it that he really comes in and play but i believe if at all they really want to come in here and really put up a show they need him because he was really so much so much magnificent into that win of united because united would have gone ahead to really win because they had lots of shots on target and the goalkeeper always came to the rescue of his team which goes by the names of Omonia. So, that is the update coming in from Omonia. The injuries at Manchester United. Anton Martial waiting for an injury update from the manager Eric Ten Hag today in the press conference. Reason being, he really got a back injury and played 29 minutes when United was playing Everton after really putting an assist or releasing Anthony to go in and really bang in the leveler or the equalizer into that game of football in the 15th minute of the game. Then the other player, Harry Maguire, he might be around because we've been told that he was trading in Portugal, so we can't wait to see what the man is going to tell us about Harry Maguire. Then the other player that is injured, that is really so much important, is Donny Van Bink. You never know, he might also be back and make it into the starting 11 or the squad that is going to be at Old Trafford in the night to see United go ahead and tussling it out with the team, which goes by the names of Omonia. So those are the injury updates coming in from both teams. That is Manchester United and a team which goes by the names of Omonia. Now, I think it's time we go into the predicted lineup because we know we all know that United win, needs to win all its remaining games. That's not that's not something to argue about. It's something that we should put into into action we need to win all those games to see if that we top that group and don't play what we call the round of 32 because the team that finishes the team that finishes second in the group is going to tussle it out with the teams that are really going to come out that are really going to be knocked out in the third position of the champions league group stages and obviously you know the teams coming from that side you might find spurs this side you might find atletico madrid this side you might find inter milan or barcelona playing this side you get Depending on the result, Inter Milan really gets at the Camp Nou today. So it's really going to be hard and that's why we need to go ahead and really win all these games. And after winning them, we can go ahead and really show how big we are. But I believe if we win the game of, if we win the game of Shelf at Old Trafford and the game of Omonia, we can go ahead and really get a result of like 3-0 in Spain because 
we played them here at Old Trafford. They really looked a good team, but we had a better chance to win that game. And I know we can go away associated and win them terribly. So let's get into the starting eleven. Sorry, the predicted starting eleven of Manchester United. Match preview, obviously, and the system is going to be four two three one because Ten Hag has never changed his system ever since he began to manage Manchester United. So let's get into the predicted starting eleven of Manchester United and how it's really going to stand in there for you. In goal, David De Gea, obviously, I cannot really put even a change up on him. However, much we're having other goalkeepers, the Brevka and Tom Heaton. But I believe what has really led David De Gea to be playing in these games is simple. The manager believes that he needs to improve on his ball distribution. And in games like this, when you're playing against Omonia Shelf, Rio Sociedad, is where you can go ahead and really do this in the match as a practice. And obviously, you saw what really came on through into the game of Everton when this guy really made a lot of ball distributions. He came out and really swept like three balls past the 18 yards box area of Manchester United. He had one save to make, but obviously his ball distribution is improving game in, game out. That is a man who goes by the names of David De Gea. He's really improving. And in this game of football, you need him to come out and really do the needful because United really needs him to see to if he really gets back to his best. And remember, Eric Ten Hag really wants to assess him before the season ends to see whether they give him a new contract or they don't give him a new contract because as come and told the public directly that is David Day after the game of Everton that he really wants to stay at Manchester United. That is David Day. And let's go to the right back. Obviously, it's Diego Dallo, Aaron Wan Bissaka being injured, Brandon Williams being injured. Those that would have come in through and really play that position very well. I believe Delo still retains that position, however much he really needs some rest. But obviously, with the remaining games with the World Cup. Maybe he can really go out through them without an injury, and him being on, and him not being an injury-prone player, the manager might see him as one of those players that is really good for a team which goes by Manchester United. And obviously, he's really a good player defensively and going forward, and he's has improved massively under Eric Ten Hag. So I believe he's really going to come in through and do the needful. Now the left back is really having lots of questions: Is Luxio going to start, or it's going to be Malasia? But I believe it's going to be this man. I believe it's going to be Tarell Malassia. Why is it going to be Tarell Malassia? Luke Shaw played 90 minutes against Everton. He played 45 minutes against the side which goes by the names of Ammonia. And I believe the manager is really going to give Malassia another chance to come in and really prove himself after really putting out that ball and losing it to Ammonia and really considered a goal against Ammonia. So the manager is going to come in through and really bring him back on the field of play to see to it that he really shows him that please, I'm ready to compete for my position. This is what you need at Manchester United. I really want to see the following happen at Manchester United that you are having two decent players in each and every position. Tarell Malasia playing as a left back competing with Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw without having experience in the Premier League but Tarell Malasia coming in and putting in a shift. Obviously that made us love him and we thought that he's really going to take it over but you do one mistake the, the manager takes you out and then gives you another chance to come in and prove yourself and obviously that is Tyrone Malasia I believe is going to play onto the left back of Manchester United and Luke Shaw is going to be rested I think for the game of Newcastle and we'll play for a side which goes by the names of United as we face Newcastle at Old Trafford you never know if a Tyrone Malasia puts in a convincing performance he might really get his spot back to start into these Premier League games then in the central defense, guess who is returning? I think Rafael Verani, who came on and played like three minutes in the game of a team which goes by the names of United versus Everton at, at Goodson's Park, obviously is going to return in there and do the needful as a central defender. And it's just and it's just something that you need to know about a man who goes by the names of Eric. Sorry. And names of Rafael Verani coming in through and really getting an injury in the game of Man City, but he has been, he has really had a very good recovery in a space of like one in a space of like one week to ten days. He has really managed to really return and really played those minutes against a team which goes by names of Everton. Now the two games you're really going to play next. I think there are three games. We are playing against after Newcastle, we are playing Aston Villa and I think Chelsea. So, in those three games, Newcastle, Aston Villa, and Chelsea, you need to charge Rafael Verani in this game of football against 
ammonia. Even if he plays just 45 minutes, there are enough for him really to go on and really get back to his match fitness and test his fitness whether it's up to standards to go in and really do the needful in this game of Newcastle. And this is going to be like like a test for him because he's really proven, but you need to see him get back to used to a match situation like that of ammonia today and his leadership skills are really going to be so much important today i believe sorry tomorrow i believe lisandro martinez is going to be rested because i've not seen i've not seen him being rested in this season he was only rested in that game of Rio Sheshedad, but he came on and played the remaining 45 minutes of the game. So I believe Victor Lindelof having put in a very good performance against Everton, the manager is going to pair or partner him with 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 uh, Rafael Verani. And remember, the first game we played in the preseason, you, when United was playing a side which goes by the names of Liverpool, you saw Lindelof being partnered with Varani and they really played very well. And their partnership is not new to one another. They know themselves. They've played together some couple of games at Manchester United. And obviously, it's not going to be something new for these two players at Manchester United. That is the man who goes by the names of Victor Lindelof and Rafael Veran. So that is the back four of United. And that's how I expect Eric Ten Hag to be in and line up like that then let's go to the midfield scott mctominy who never played i think he played like five minutes or ten minutes in the game of everton versus the side which goes by the names of manchester united and he played just i think five minutes in the game of ammonia away versus united i think he's going to start in the midfield area to play in a double midfield pivot of manchester united as a cdm remember he looked very great this season after that loss of brentford and brighton and obviously, the coming year of Casimir and proving to us that he's really the player that's supposed to be playing into that position. The manager really took long to really start him. Scott McTominay has fallen back into the picking order of the manager after Casimiro came out and proved that I'm the real guy to play into this position. And so, he has to start this game. The other reason is he got a 50th yellow card in the game of Everton. And obviously, he is really going to be missing out on the game of Newcastle. He's not going to be part of the match squad because he never really amounted 12 games. Because if at all you really get a yellow card when you've played 12 games, a fifth yellow card when you play 12 games, then you can't miss out on a game. But Scott McTominay, having played only and only how many games? He has just played only and only... How many games are they? eight and he's having five yellow cards this shows you how he really gets those yellow cards and some of them were stupid like that against brentford and brighton they were really stupid yellow cards that he really got so i believe he's going to start in a dummy pivot alongside a man who goes by the names of christian erickson obviously erickson is really one of those players that he's a connector he gets that ball from the midfield and really connects it to the attack the likes of bruno sancho Marcus Rashford, Anton Masia, Ronaldo, that is Ericsson. Though recently, after the international break, he has not yet gotten back to the levels of the Ericsson we knew, but obviously, you know him with his long passing, switching play, um, creating assists, targets on shots on target, and very many more. That is Ericsson for you, and we expect the best out of this guy who goes by the names of Ericsson into this game of football. So that Dawa Mitri people is going to be Ericsson and Scott McTominay because I believe the manager cannot mess around to bring in Freddy because he first needs to get a win. If at all we really end the first half with like three goals to nil, I think the likes of Freddy will come in through and do the needful in this game of football. Then the central attack midfielder, obviously Bruno Fernandes, the captain of the club, as Harry Maguire has really failed to retain his starting position into the starting level of Manchester United. But I believe if Donny was around, he would have been starting some of these games because he's better in that position than Bruno Fernandes. He offers us a lot because when you are a central attack midfielder, you don't need to really do a lot of touches. You just need to be having that pass, that eye, that can really do line-breaking passes. And obviously, Donny van Bink is better at that than Bruno Fernandes. The only thing that Bruno has better than than Donny is the work rate, and I believe that's why the field of play. But the manager, Eric Tiana, came out and really said or complained about Donny van Bink that if he has been fit, would have been playing some games because Bruno has also been really not that player who has always been all not impressing. And... The manager has showed us that he's ready to drop any player. Marcia, sorry, Ronaldo was dropped. Um, Malasia was dropped. Um, 
um, Harry Maguire was dropped, Sancho was dropped. So the manager can drop any player provided he doesn't really do well on the field of play. And obviously, if at all Danny Van Bink was fit, I believe that in these games of football, especially the game concerning Everton, he would have started because Bruno was just a joke. You get? So I believe we can go ahead and redo the needful into this game of football if at all Donny really recovers and we pray he really returns fully fit. Then on the right, attacking side of the midfield is going to be Anthony. Anthony, obviously, in the UEFA Europa League, he has played other games, but he has not scored any goal. But in the Premier League, in his first three games of United, he has scored three goals. Every game, he has been scoring consecutively, and he's really one of those boys on fire. And I believe it has really helped him take off that pressure from his shoulders as far as his amount of money he was bought from Ajax is concerned. Remember, he was bought at £85 million, and people were saying that is a huge money for him. Obviously, it was huge, and it was a mistake made by the board, because if at all they had got in earlier for him, they would have really gotten in this player to sign for the club and obviously at 50 million pounds he's saving close to 35 million pounds even casimiro if i had gone in earlier for casimiro i believe would have gone in for like 30 million pounds sorry 40 million pounds and he would have saved close to 30 million pounds meaning that if at all those two deals were really conducted or done and dusted in time united would have saved close to 70 million pounds and that would have gone in for bringing people like Cody Gapko and maybe a center forward that Eric Ten Hag was really urging Ho was really dying to bring in at Manchester United. So for Anthony he's going to start because a player who comes that amount of money there is no reason to really bench him. He's still young 22 years of age he has to go on and really continue with his with his scoring game and obviously i want to see more assists from him i want to see him really sitting down players i want to see him putting in those deadly crosses coming in from that right attacking side of the midfield because that is really lacking in his game but i know it's the premier league different game altogether and he's really trying to get back to his pace having really having really striked for two weeks without training with Ajax and not playing any game. That is really a problem that really affected his form when he came in at Manchester United. But the good thing is that amid his team struggling to find his form, he's really backing in and netting in those goals. And I know with him scoring three goals in his first three games, I believe he might really go into double figures of close to 15 goals this season in his first season at Manchester United. That will silence the haters at that will silence the haters of Anthony in the entire world. Now, left attack midfielder Sancho, I believe he's going to return and start into this game of football. Rashford is going to be rested into the game of football as we play a side which goes by the name of Omonia. Reason being, he played badly against Omonia and he was taken, he was taken, he was taken off. And in the second half, it was started by Marcus Rashford in that position. He came in and scored a brace with Anton Martial and Sancho was on the bench and he was and a new substitute when United was beating Everton by how many goals? By two goals to one, and they never brought him on into that game of football. So I believe Sancho has to go ahead and really show the money that, please, I'm sorry, I'll never do it. I'm apologetic. And every time I really lose that ball, I have to really track back. And this is why we lost to Man City. These players were not tracking back. Anthony and Sancho were not tracking back. And I think when he was putting them on the field of play against Omonia, he told them that, you guys, you played very badly against Man City. The reason was you guys were not tracking back, but I want you to track back. Anthony was tracking back, Sancho didn't. And Anthony retained his position, but Sancho didn't not on any occasion. So I believe Sancho is going to be given a position to start in the game of football as we are hosting Omoni at Old Trafford because we are preparing for the game of Newcastle. And you never know, his performance today might really find him in the starting eleven of Newcastle versus Manchester United at Old Trafford on sunday and guess who's leading the line the man that is really on fire and he has banged in a goal in the premier league for the very first time ever since the season started and he has now two goals in this season but he missed out on close to three four goals when he was playing against omonia if there is any way to come out and really revenge to omonia having really missed out on very many chances this is the chance that ronaldo is having so i believe ronaldo will come in through and really cause a lot of havoc and damage to a side which goes by names of omonia in this game of football because i believe having scored that goal against everton he looked like he has really gotten back into the shape that really wants the confidence he's trying to really come back and really be high up in there so guys 
that's the predicted lineup of Manchester United, and that's how I believe you're really going to start against a team which goes by the names of Omonia, <laughs> Nicosia, at Manchester United. So, your predictions are welcome, but I believe it's going to be a high scoring. It's going to be a high game scoring. It's going to be a high scoring game. I believe we can put four goals past this team. We can put four goals past this team, provided we really put in practice what we call quick passing. Because the reason as to why we never scored in the first half away in Cyprus was because we never really used that quick passing. One touch football was really important, and you saw how it really came in through and really saved United in scoring those three goals against Omonia away in their foyer. Secondly, our defense shouldn't make those mistakes that really made to see to it that we consider those two stupid goals. I believe David De Gea would have kept a clean sheet in that game, but obviously we wouldn't because we made two stupid mistakes that really resulted into those goals that we really considered as Manchester United. So your reactions are welcome in the comment section below. Tell me your prediction in United versus Omonia. And obviously, we are waiting to see what Eric Ten Hag is really going to say in the press conference that I'm going to bring to you in here as a press conference reaction when Ten Hag is done. Thank you guys for watching in Rock and David happens to be my name. United Matters channel, the YouTube channel watching me on. And I sign out for now. See you later. And feel free to tell me what you think about this game. What are your thoughts? And who do you think should be in? And who do you think should be out? I hand you over the remote lot to predict you abundantly. I sign out for now. See you later, my mates.